This is the mRNA vaccine by Moderna. It's the third to be approved by the Australian regulator. It's been used extensively in the US and accounts for 140 million vaccinations there. That's about 40% of all doses. But it's just gaining ground here. So what do we actually know about it? Like Pfizer's vaccine, Moderna's works with mRNA. It goes into our cells, it helps our cells make the protein, and then it disappears. mRNA, or messenger RNA, is a temporary carrier of genetic instructions that tells our cells to make a particular protein. In this case, it's the spike protein found on the surface of the coronavirus. It doesn't become part of our genome, and it is indeed just, you know, a transient instruction. The mRNA is wrapped in a fatty coating that helps it enter our cells. And once the instruction in the mRNA is inside, the cells use it to make the protein and display it on the surface. Immune cells then recognise that those spike proteins don't belong there and lock onto them. They learn to create antibodies against them and then we retain a memory of that, which is enhanced when we go for our second dose of vaccine. The mRNA then gets broken down quickly after its contents are delivered and used. mRNA vaccines are something Australia doesn't have the capacity to produce just yet. That's why we're getting our supply from the US where Moderna is based we would receive uh, a million doses during the course of September and then three million in each of October, November and December. That adds up to 10 million doses being delivered by the end of the year. The Pfizer BioNTech and the Moderna mRNA vaccines are actually remarkably similar. And it is quite amazing that these two independent companies on different continents over the similar period of time managed to develop vaccines that are so remarkably similar. The same spike protein is produced, but the sequences differ in the exact wording of the genetic code for the spike protein. Even if the underlying mRNA sequence is different, the spike protein it produces is essentially identical because each amino acid in the protein can be coded by a variety of different sequences. You could think about it this way, one plus four equals five, but three plus two also equals five. The two vaccines use different oily coatings. That doesn't matter so much because the oily coating dissolves once it's inside the cell anyway. The Moderna formula also has 100 micrograms of mRNA material, while Pfizer has 30. They tested different amounts and then they stuck with the amount that worked best for them. If you get the Moderna vaccine, the two doses will be spaced four weeks apart, compared to three weeks for Pfizer and up to 12 for AstraZeneca. But despite the differences, their effectiveness is pretty similar. The latest studies show the Moderna vaccine stays 93% effective up to six months after both doses are injected. That goes up to 98% for protection against severe disease. That's slightly better than the Pfizer alternative, which according to the company's own data, drops to 84% effectiveness six months after the second dose and about 95% against severe disease. Moderna says more study is needed to see how well the vaccine works against different variants. Both companies already have a booster vaccine targeting the newer variants of concern. 60 million booster doses of Pfizer's vaccine and 15 million of Moderna's are set to arrive in Australia next year.